I have been on GLP-1 medication off and on for the past year. So listen, I have been trying to figure out a way to be more consistent with my content creation. I have been up and down on that journey. And if you've been following me for a while, you know that the struggle is real. It's like trying to balance career and creativity and really like giving myself the opportunity to create content has been a struggle. And I started to really think about what kind of content I could create if I were gonna be more consistent, maybe less aesthetic editing. And so I figured I would experiment with doing a vlog. My week is kind of off to a slow start, but I um, I just did my shot of terzepatide compound and I have been on G1 medication off and on for the past year. It's been an interesting journey. Like in some cases I've been underwhelmed with the experience, in other cases I feel like just when it starts to work then there is either some kind of insurance issue or the prior authorization expires and doesn't get approved. So there has been like this up and down um, with me getting on the medication. And initially I was on Wigovi. Um, and I had success on Wagovi like right off the bat, like the first week I lost weight. But then it was like it really tapered off and I plateaued and I stopped losing weight. Um, now I wasn't gaining it back. And maybe I was losing a pound here or there, like I would probably say total in four months that I was on Wagovi that I only lost about. 10 pounds total, maybe 11, you know? Um, luckily, when the prior authorization did expire, I didn't gain the weight back when I went off of the medication. And so, you know, I guess that's a, I guess that's a plus. After a few months, um, ZepBound became available, which is essentially um, well, if you don't know, Wigovi is Ozempic, but it's been basically rebranded and FDA approved for weight loss specifically. So it's the same medication, but um, when they're going for FDA approvals for different things, they actually have to, to change the name of the medication. So, so they changed the name of Ozempic to Wigovi for the FDA approval. And so then um, there was Manjaro, which by the way, I'm having coffee. So Manjaro is essentially, um, Wigovi is what they call, and Ozempic, is what they call a GLP-1 agonist. And, um, and Manjaro is a dual agonist, meaning that it has two different ways that it basically, um, two different paths to effectiveness. And so, it has slightly better results in all of the trials. And so Manjaro rebranded as a weight loss medication called ZepBound. And I got on ZepBound and after one month I actually switched jobs. And so then my new insurance would not cover it. So I was only on ZepBound for one month. I did kind of feel like it wasn't working at first, but then in the last couple of weeks, everything kind of changed. And I feel like that last week, or actually about the last week and a half, I started to feel like it was working all of a sudden. And so what I ended up doing was just going on the compound. So I actually got my doctor to prescribe the medication to be fulfilled at a compounding pharmacy. And so that's what I'm on now. So I was initially on the 0.25 milligrams of ZepBound, and now I'm on the 0.5 milligrams of what would be zap bound with the terzepatide compound. And so I am now, I have now 
started my fourth week on the terzepatide compound. And it's kind of hard to compare the two because I'm also on a different strength, right? So like it's gonna feel stronger. But I feel like it's finally kind of starting to work. I would say I'm not having like that fast responder. I'm not a person that's like losing 20 pounds in one month. Like if I lose four or five pounds in a month, that would be amazing. Week by week, I do feel like it's gotten better. The last, now I'm on my fourth shot of the 0.5 and I will say that like over the last week, I feel like it wore off faster. So it really is a journey. Um, but I have like upped my supplement game. And so like, as you can see, I'm making my coffee right now. You can hear me clacking this, this spoon around. Um, I'm making my coffee right now and I've actually been putting in my coffee, this mushroom blend, um, which has got like, um, I think it's lion's tail and um, cordyceps and all that stuff in there. I have really found that since I started taking the mushrooms that, and the mushroom blend, that I have improved focus. I work in a startup and there are lots of things going on all at the same time. There are lots of unexpected things that happen in that environment. And so you can make plans and then get detoured off to fix something that has come up or to put out little fires along throughout the day. And because of that, you can kind of get off task really easily. I have found that taking the mushrooms has been like really helpful for me to stay focused, to stay on task, or to at least remember to go right back to the task whenever I'm done putting out fires or whatever. So I recommend that everyone definitely should try a mushroom blend. I just kind of like I'm dipping my toe in it. So I just got the Whole Foods 365 organic powdered mushroom blend. And so that's just sort of an entry point for me. It has been working and I do recommend it. Also, just a little bit of background story. Last year, I actually accepted a position working for Equinox and I started to focus a little bit more on like health and wellness and just from being in the environment. Now I actually work for a wellness startup that really combines Eastern ideas about wellness with Western. So, you know, there's acupuncture and Chinese medicine and Reiki and all of these things like kind of like combined together with traditional ideas of wellness in the same space. And so like I have been really learning a lot about supplements. I have been really learning a lot about diet. I have been trying to be a lot better and to be more, much more educated and like lean my decisions about like what I eat and what I don't eat kind of into a much more um, holistic wellness um, outlook. So. Um, so yeah, I've been adding in like different supplements and these mushrooms is something that I had researched and I started taking them and honestly, um, I like it. Um, now I'm mixing it with <laughs> this Vietnamese coffee with oat milk. It's called Sang. And this, I really like. Vietnamese coffee is really strong. I need strong coffee, y'all. Like, for real. Like, I need strong coffee. So I've been adding the mushroom powder to that and I don't know about this particular brand, but I read that Vietnamese coffee has like 275 grams of caffeine. <laughs> so it is strong, but it does the trick for me and I don't feel zapped. Like I don't, when I when I when I drink that, I don't feel like wired up or like like I'm overly buzzed up on caffeine. So whatever is in there, it's working out smoothly for me. But yeah, I sprinkle in my little mushroom powder into this and it tastes good. I barely taste it actually. If I put the mushroom blend in like water though, it does taste like dirty water. So I just prefer to put it in something else. So anyway, I'm experimenting with this vlog thing. Let's see if it's something that I enjoy doing and I'll definitely try to continue. But aside from my um, Ozempic this week, I actually have um, a couple of small things going on. Like I'm gonna do some self care. Um, I'm gonna be going to get Botox tomorrow. But today I'm keeping it chill. I actually have a Zoom meeting for my job. So I'm actually working on my day off, but I have a, a two hour Zoom meeting for my job that I'll be doing today. So otherwise I'll check in in a little bit. Tony, you and I are gonna be from the masters of the AV in the library. That is our new show. Hi, can you guys hear me? So 
as I mentioned, I'm really trying to get more serious about my vlogging so that I can be a, even more productive and more consistent with my content creation. So um, I actually got these little microphones from newer, which are the CM28. It comes with two microphones and then it also has like these little dead cats that you can use to muffle out wind. So I have one on now because I just wanted to get a feel for what the sound would be like. Hopefully um, the sound turns out to be good on these. You guys will have to tell me what you think of the quality. I'm excited about having wireless mice. What I do like about these is they actually come with a connector for my camera as well. So I can use these for when I use my camera or my phone. Let's see how these work out. Okay, so I am in a taxi right now. I had a very chill day and I was originally just gonna like have a chill night as well. And some of my friends were out, so I'm gonna go out, I'm gonna have one drink. I'm not gonna vlog at the club, but I will see you <laughs> tomorrow. Okay, so it's the next morning and it's my day off. So I've got a few little errands that I'm gonna run. I am just trying to like wake up. You know, it's, it's really interesting because I would consider myself to be a morning person, but for me to actually like get up, <laughs> It's always kind of tough. It's the middle of the week, but in a way, this is almost kind of like my Sunday. So I'm just gonna get up and I'm gonna like take myself to breakfast. Okay, so I'm ready to head out to the diner. I just threw on like these ripped shorts and a little like rock and roll muscle tee. Yeah, just casual. This is gonna be kind of an interesting meal because because I'm on that uh, terzepatide compound. Like I want all of the things. Like I want French toast, bacon, eggs, all of the things. But I don't even know how much of it I'm gonna be able to eat. So I did end up ordering French toast, a side of um, bacon, and two eggs over easy. So like I went for like a full breakfast situation. Let's see how much of it I can actually eat. Okay, so I'm supposed to be like icing my head to prepare for the Botox, but I actually read somewhere that using an ice pack can like interfere with the results or something like that. So I'm actually gonna not use the ice pack, but if you wanna use an ice pack when you're getting Botox, that, that's your business. Okay, so it's probably a little noisy, but I just finished getting my Botox and I have a couple of little knots now on my head, but those will go down. 
So now I'm about to go get some tacos. Hopefully you can hear me in here, but every time I come to this neighborhood, I have to stop at this taco place. And the tacos are amazing. I'm trying to make sure that I don't have any food or anything on my face because I slayed those tacos. I'm actually about to head over to Great Jones Street. Okay, I wanted to come over here to Great Jones. I'm a big art fanatic and I'm big on the art history here in New York City. And Great Jones Street is actually where John Michel Basquiat's studio was on Great Jones. And the building is still there. And sometimes I actually like to go and just go by there just to see it and I don't know. Sometimes I feel like I get inspiration from the spirits there or something. But it's been kind of a thing because artists have been coming to that location for years and like doing little paintings or writing on the outside of the wall of the building. And so it had turned into like this sort of like graffiti thing. And a couple of years ago, the people who owned the building, they came and they painted it white. It was kind of like sad because, you know, you had this building. It was like a piece of New York history. And I don't know, they just kind of painted over it. But it's now starting to look like an art piece again. Like I think that they, uh, people have been coming and painting over it anyway. It's definitely not what it was, but I'll show you. So that's the building there. And as you can see, it still has like Jean-Michel Basquiat's crown. And the art that used to be on the outside of it, it used to be more interesting, but you know, at least it's like still has a piece of like art culture. It still has an art, art culture kind of vibe to it, even though it's kind of not what it once was. I'm gonna try to go across so that you can get a better look. I wonder how often people come here and take pictures and stuff, but yeah, I mean, just a couple of years ago, they had painted this whole thing white. I'll try to insert some pictures of what it used to look like. I really think that that's one of the most interesting things about living here in New York City is how much exposure you have to history, especially art history. After getting Botox and having those tacos, it's time to go home and take a nap. So I'm actually getting ready to go to work soon, but I wanted to sit down with my coffee because I was having some thoughts surrounding this upcoming Father's Day. It's kind of interesting for me whenever like these kinds of holidays come around, Father's Day, Mother's Day. A, because my mom passed away when I was really young. And my father, although he is still alive, he was never really in the picture, like he wasn't really there. I don't have any like animosity towards him. Luckily, I don't have any horror stories about him. He seems to be a really nice guy. I know that he wants to have a relationship with me and he has expressed a lot of interest in connecting with me. And I'm just in a kind of indifferent place about it. It's not even that I don't want to have a relationship with him. But it's a situation where it's like I didn't miss something that I didn't have. I don't recognize that I have some sort of void that needs to be filled by having a relationship with him. And so 
in some ways I know it sounds kind of cold to say that but it really is just how I feel so I feel like having a relationship with him could be a little forced I feel like I have to sort of make a lot of compromises in order to make it happen and you know this is just me thinking through it you know maybe there is some more things that I need to consider you know, when I'm not on camera but I think at least at this space in my life it's hard for me to recognize the value in having a connection with him I think on one hand, I think it is a bit of a blessing that he even wants to have that relationship with me. And so I think that that's a piece of it that I need to, from a global and universal and spiritual perspective, that I need to recognize that he is here. And as I said, I don't have any abuse stories. I don't have any horror stories about him. I think, you know what, I think the problem is for me too also, we can get into it more, but essentially I was bullied when I was in my younger years of school and I think that the fact that he wasn't there to protect me and I think when it comes to family in general I think everybody kind of took part in trying to protect me from being gay bashed or being bullied and so I think because he wasn't there to even participate in that process I'm even more inclined to feel like Oh, well, you know, out of sight, out of mind. I don't, I don't miss it because I never had it, you know? And you weren't there to do your job. I don't know, I'm, I'm processing. And I think that the part of me that, that realizes that I should have a more open heart and that I should be receptive to having conversation with him and then there's a part of me that's just like, it's forced and I don't need it. Let's see how it lands. I mean, I think that it might be beneficial at some point just to jump on a call with him. I do, I always miss calls from him and, and never really um, pick up, you know? <laughs> it's my own fault, I know. As Father's Day approaches, it's something that that's on my mind. It's something that I think about. It's something that I have thought about. I mean, I wonder what you guys think, I mean, Here's the thing too, I, 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 minor detail that I that I didn't mention, but my dad, he has, I'm gonna say at least 20 kids, at least. It could be more like 30, but I know that he has at least 20 kids. And so that's, that's the other piece. 20 kids, different mothers. There is more than one of me out there who has this story. And they all have different relationships with him. I mean, some of them live close by him and they still have a relationship with him. I live across the country and I, and I don't. So I guess when trying to consider whether or not it's worth changing that, it's a process and there's a lot to think about. crazy because everything was going well for most of the commute like I was actually kind of shocked but then I got on the train and the train decided to stop at one station and stay there for like 10 minutes and so that f***ed up my morning <laughs> but I am arriving at work now and I guess I'll check back in okay so I just got off work and I actually had a pretty decent day, I can't really complain. It was honestly very chill, which I personally kind of like a chill day at work sometimes, you know, when it's like not too stressful. I had a really good meeting um, with a guy that I'm thinking about partnering up with to, to do a little podcasting. So stay tuned for that. Hopefully that actually comes to fruition because I think it'll be a really good I think it could be a really good thing. I'm actually headed to get um, a massage. Time to do a little bit of self-care.
Wow, during my foot massage, the weather completely changed up. Look how crazy that is. It was a completely sunny summer day. That's New York for you. I'm on my way to work. It's like 7.30 in the morning. I'm actually leading a meeting at work at eight o'clock. I'm kind of trying to decide if I want to take a car to work or if I am going to take the train. If I did take a car, I would kind of have a little bit more time because I could write down some notes for the meeting inside the car. But I guess we'll take the train and call it a day. Actually, you know what? good way for me to test out this microphone but we're just gonna do the city bike to get to the train station because I'm gonna take the kind of a train that's a few avenues over and since I'm crunched for time I'm actually taking the city bike to the train station is gonna be clutch for getting to work a little early so that I can jot down some notes. So I actually just got off work. I love those kinds of days where everything just goes really smooth and I can just get in, get my work done and get out. I'm feeling a little bit scruffy. So I think I might actually try to hit my barber up and see if I can get a quick little haircut. percent happy I color my hair every couple of weeks and then I get it cut in between and when I get the haircut in between sometimes I end up with a dark shadow right here on the side from where he faded it too much and I'll be trying to tell him like not to cut the color off and so anyway long story short I'm probably gonna color my hair again when I get home so that look better. I don't know if you can see that. Anyway, gave away problems. <laughs> so it's the next day and last night I got caught up editing and I did not do my hair. So I work today and I can't go in looking crazy. So I'm going to go ahead and fix my hair. Until we both lose our 
mind. Why can't we let ourselves play it safe just for a while? Cause baby, I know it, you know it, we know it. Deep inside, we do addicted to friction to change our mind. We're so in love, but babe, it's not enough to survive. Cause it's your way, love, love. So yeah, I would say that this week, it hasn't been bad. I honestly enjoyed my week. My Botox is settling in nicely. <laughs> and um, I have to say, I kind of like vlogging, so I'm going to try to continue doing it. Um, there is a little bit of a learning curve in terms of what to do with the files, like this, how I'm going to manage that. But overall, um, I enjoyed the week. If you made it this far in the video, I would love to have you subscribe and check out some of my other videos. I think that I have a lot of good content and now that I've added on blogging, I think it'll be an interesting ride, an interesting journey. So check me out.